way more confident than someone that's hunched looking at the floor walking like this. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Ollie. I'm a lifestyle creator who is obsessed with self-care. Here we focus on living a self-care lifestyle and being the best versions of ourselves. So it's very fitting that today we're gonna be talking about how to exude confidence. I wanted to share with you guys some tips about how to change your self-concept, how to elevate that self-concept, and of course, how to fake it until you make it. Returners know the drill, but for my new friends, go ahead and get a snack, get a drink, hit that subscribe button, and let's get into the video. All right, friends. In order to exude confidence, we need to focus on raising our self-esteem and basically elevating our self-concept. And when I talk about self-concept, what I mean is essentially the idea or the story that you tell about yourself. Basically, the belief that you have about who you are and the things that define you in this life. So let's start off with our self-concept as it is right now. If you're kind of still not getting what I mean, I want you to write down a couple of things. Number one, talk about what you do for a living. Number two, talk about how you dress. Talk about your behaviors when you're hanging out with your friends. Talk about your romantic life. So basically what I'm picking out are all the aspects of your life that make you you, the things that make you who you are. Essentially, when you pick that apart and you start to write things down and maybe analyze and introspect a little bit more, you start to learn more about the stories that you tell about yourself. So I'll give you an example about myself. The other day I went out and I posted this photo on my story. I got a lot of, <laughs> a lot of love, obviously, but I'm not gonna lie, when I wore this outfit, I was feeling very uncomfortable. Like when I put this outfit on, I literally was like lollygagging in my apartment to the point that I was like an hour and a half late to meet with my friends. And the reason is, which I realized later, is that this outfit did not match the self-concept that I had of myself. I had this concept of myself that I'm the person that doesn't show too much skin. Maybe it's because I'm plus size, but I've always kind of been like on more on the modest basic side of what I wear in terms of clothing. And this outfit was a little bit out of my wheelhouse. It was like, just not what I would usually wear. So that's a good example of what your self-concept is. It's essentially the stories you tell about yourself that shape your life on an everyday basis. The best way to exude confidence is to basically determine the sources of poor self-concept that you have in your life. What is it in your life that you have a negative story that you tell about yourself? For me, it's my wardrobe. I always tell myself that I am the basic girl. I'm not the girl that goes out of her way to like put together a fit. I'm very like, you know, like I'm not the fashionista that was always a story I would tell myself and that's an example of a negative self-concept that I have so use that example to determine what are some of the negative self-concepts that you have about yourself and the reason that I'm pointing these out is that these are the things that are prohibiting you from exuding confidence so when you have a lot of pieces of your self-concept that are negative that are kind of like you're talking down to yourself it's hard for you to exude confidence because a lot of the way you feel is not confident so for me, when I'm going out to parties and stuff, sometimes I don't feel as confident because I'm wearing clothes that don't match my self-concept. In that same vein, you probably have a couple behaviors that are exacerbating this self-concept. So using the same example for myself, I am a very basic person. I'm, I wear like athletic gear all the time. I think it's because I grew up an athlete. I was a three sport athlete. After that, I was a personal trainer. So for me, I'm always focused on comfort. <laughs> I just wanna be comfortable in whatever I wear. And that is something that exacerbates that negative self-concept I have around my wardrobe because I was telling myself this story that in order to be comfortable, I cannot be fashionable. Like, you know, the two don't go together when in reality they can. You just have to change the way you look at your wardrobe. So look at your own negative self-concepts and what are the things that you're basically creating stories and exacerbating that negative self-concept. If you're someone who's really shy and you wanna be more outgoing, are you telling yourself that you're the shy person? Are you telling yourself that you're not the outgoing person? And what behaviors are you doing on a daily basis that are exacerbating that? Like, do you walk around with noise canceling headphones all the time so then nobody will talk to you and you seem standoffish? Do you walk with your head down? You know, you don't look around you kind of just look at your feet all the time these are all things that are behaviors that are exacerbating that negative self-concept that you have about yourself so it's a little bit deeper than just telling yourself to be more confident or telling yourself that you're pretty it's about identifying the behaviors that you have on a daily basis that are exacerbating that negative self-concept that you're trying to get away from for example if you think that you're not 
that pretty and you tell yourself I'm just not the girl that wears a lot of makeup I'm not the girl that gets her hair done that's just not me but in the same vein you feel lesser than because you can't do these things are you just telling yourself that you can't do these things is there a reason that you can't try a new makeup look or you can't try a new hairstyle or is it just that your behaviors are exacerbating this negative self-concept and keeping you in the same hole that you've been in so once you've taken an inventory of all your behaviors and your negative self-concepts it's time to work to redefine and improve those self-concepts and in other words raise your self-esteem so this is not just a thing that you do in terms of saying things to yourself it's also about changing your actions so that your behaviors aren't reinforcing that same idea that you have about yourself for example and i'm going to just continue using wardrobe because this is something that i'm working on clearly this year for me when it came to wearing things that are outside of like you know my typical style i basically would not want to wear things that were baggy or oversized and i realized that this was a direct relation to my size that because i'm a plus size person i always thought i need to show off my figure you know i'm someone with an hourglass figure i always thought okay in order to look good and look fashionable you know i gotta show off the hourglass figure that was part of the reason why it was so hard for me to dress up all the time because i felt like dressing up was meaning I had to be uncomfortable. When in reality, they don't have to be like that. Like you can dress up and be comfortable. You just have to change your style. So for me, the way I've been working on improving my self-esteem when it comes to my wardrobe is making sure that I'm buying things that not only fit me, but are almost like too big for me. So this year I went back, last year and this year I went out and I like threw out all the pants that don't fit me right now. If I put it on and I couldn't pull it up or it was too tight or it was uncomfortable to sit down, I gave it away to donation. I was just like, no, this is no longer gonna be a part of your wardrobe. If you lose weight, okay, we'll go get new clothes, but let's get clothes that fit you right now. And I went and got all new pants that were like a size or two bigger for me. And they either had a drawstring at the waist or I went and got them tailored and got the waist taken in. So that's what I'm talking about in terms of changing your behaviors and your actions to actually improve this concept you have of yourself. I could have just sat in the mirror and been like, you're beautiful, but that wouldn't have really done anything. You know, the part of the thing that was making me feel uncomfortable was that my clothes weren't fitting me correctly. So then I never wanted to dress up because I felt uncomfortable. But once I went and switched my clothes to make sure all my pieces are comfortable, all of a sudden it's like I can create all these different outfits because everything fits me correctly. So let's take it back to the person that maybe doesn't feel like they're very pretty. They might be not going to get new makeup because they're looking at TikTok too much and they're looking at all these people with Dior and fucking Chanel and Laura Mercier and all that stuff and they're thinking I can't afford that makeup. When in reality, there are dupes for almost everything in Sephora. There is a dupe for almost everything you can find. Personally, I don't believe you need a high-end everything. I feel like the drugstore does its thing. Like, it's just about technique. So if you're that person that you feel like, I don't feel that pretty, but you're not, you kind of have that concept of yourself that I don't wear a lot of makeup, maybe go into the drugstore and look for some sheer, like, BB creams or CC creams, you know? Look for some lighter coverage foundations, you know, lighter coverage concealers. Going and finding things that work for you that can fit your wallet and then you can work on your technique. And this way that you're not using that idea of, oh, I don't use makeup or I'm not, you know, I'm not the person with the beat face is no longer going to be a part of your self-concept. You can get rid of that by looking at a way to get around it. So once you find ways to get around or basically change the way you're approaching something when it comes to your self-concept, you also have to create new systems in order to reinforce this new self-concept that you're trying to instill in yourself. So for me, trying to be more of a fashionista, in order to change the self-concept of myself, I had to do the work of dressing up almost every day. And this doesn't mean that I'm in like ball gowns or I'm in dresses every single day. It just means like putting more of an effort into my wardrobe and my day-to-day -day looks. I used to be someone that really did not care about the way I looked. Like if I was not on camera, I did not give a fuck. I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I think especially if you know how to do hair and makeup, you're, there's this like dichotomy of who you are when you're fully done up and who you are 90% of the time, but you just don't care. Cause like in your head, you're like, I know how to do, like I know how to look good when it's time to. But part of my negative self-concept was that I wasn't the fashionista. I wasn't the person that you see on the subway and is dressed up. I'm the person on the subway in sneakers. And in order to reinforce a new system with myself, I had to make a conscious effort every day to put together an outfit that I thought was cute. Just finding new systems in order to reinforce that new idea that you want to instill of yourself. So if you're trying to be better at doing your makeup and you want to feel prettier with makeup, maybe put more of an effort to wear makeup every day. Even if it's just a little concealer, a little blush, a little lip gloss, 
going from wearing nothing to something on a regular basis over time will change the self-concept you have of yourself. You're no longer gonna tell yourself, I'm not the pretty girl. You're gonna tell yourself, I am the pretty girl. I just need to do X, Y, and Z to feel pretty. And obviously you can just fake it till you make it. This is a big piece of confidence that I think a lot of people don't realize is a lot of the most confident people that you walk past are faking it. They don't feel that confident. They're just walking with their head high and trying to exude confidence. So easy ways that you can fake it till you make it, even if you don't feel confident, shoulders back, slow down when you talk. I learned this in one time I took a speech class and she told me like, sit up, shoulders back. If you're feeling yourself getting overwhelmed, just and then continue your sentence. And once I learned that, I realized that I'm like, okay, like if I do X, Y, and Z, I can feel better with public speaking, you know, all this stuff. And even though like, funny enough, I hate public speaking, even though I'm a content creator, I hate public speaking, it makes me very nervous. Having these tips of how to fake it, shoulders up, shoulders back, taking many deep breaths in between my sentences, you know, using it as like a, like, you know, like a, thematic pause like I'm thinking but in reality I'm just trying to not look so fucking scared <laughs> like I am so that's an easy way to fake it till you make it when you're walking down the street keeping your head up not looking at your feet I used to do this a lot and I didn't even realize how it was making me come off like I wasn't confident mainly because in New York there's always dog shit like there's dog shit everywhere there's so many dogs in this damn city. So part of the reason why I'm always looking down is really to make sure I'm not stepping in shit. But over time, that what you do subconsciously changes your self-concept as well. So by looking down at my feet all the time, I realized that I was feeling less confident as I walked around the city and I felt like almost like trying to hide. So what I do now is when I'm walking, I find a point in the distance and I just look at that point and I just focus on keeping my head up. And that kind of helps me keep my head up without worrying about whether or not someone's looking at me or making eye contact. Keep my head up, look at that point, and once you get closer to that point, find a new point to look at. Easy way you can fake it till you make it. People that walk with their shoulders back, you know, nice pace, head up, look way more confident than someone that's hunched, looking at the floor, walking like this. Like It's a completely different aura that you're giving off just by faking it. Another way you can fake it till you make it is with the positive self-talk. So I don't think that positive self-talk is completely useless. I just think in order to change your self-concept, you have to change your behaviors and your systems in order to reinforce that self-concept that you're trying to create. If a part of that is feeling more confident, in order to fake it until you make it, maybe you start every day with telling yourself how beautiful you are. Maybe you create an affirmations list that you say to yourself to say, I'm a beautiful magnet, I am rich, I am lucky, all these things happen to me, you know? Like, whatever it is that you feel insecure about, create affirmations and say them to yourself. Look in the mirror and say them to yourself. Another thing I would say is to look at yourself naked more. This is a really great way to improve your self-esteem. I don't think a lot of people realize if you don't live alone, you can't do this. Maybe in your room, spend more time naked and getting used to your naked body. It will also help you to be more comfortable, be more confident, just because you're just used to looking at yourself. The more time you spend looking at yourself in the mirror, whether it's your body or your face, the more time you spend getting used to your face, the more time you spend falling in love with your face. Even though in that moment you might be faking it, give it six months and you actually will feel that way. So other things I wanted to mention around exuding more confidence and changing your self-concept is that even if you can you know, walk the walk and fake it, you have to be able to talk the talk. So you have to be able to actually back up the things that you're saying or you're trying to create in terms of your self-concept. So I would actually start this by creating like a mood board, maybe on Pinterest or on your Notion page, and just take clips from the internet of what your dream girl looks like. You know, how does her hair look like? What kind of car does she drive? What does her apartment look like? You know, does she have a large friend group? Does she have a small friend group? Does she have pets? Like all those things, I would really look for photos of people that look like you. So black women don't look for white people, things like that. And just having that mood board as a thing you can go back to, to reference like that version of yourself that you wanna be. For myself, I have a folder in my TikTok that whenever I see someone that's either, maybe I like their apartment or I like their car, I like the way they dress, I like the way they do their hair, I put it in that folder. That's like my mood board. So whenever I'm not feeling like inspired, I go back to that mood board and kind of remind myself of the self-concept that I am working to keep building. Another thing I would recommend is improving your wardrobe. So even if the thing you're not working on is like me, maybe you're not working on having a better fashion sense, I would recommend improving your wardrobe, especially when you get into your 20s. 
once you hit 25, your body's gonna change. You're gonna notice that things aren't gonna fit you the same way, whether you just get bigger hips or you gain weight or whatever the case is, like you'll notice during your 20s that your body will change and things will look different on you. And also your style is gonna change. I know once I got to 20, I didn't wanna wear crop tops as often as I used to. I'm like, I just want a proper t-shirt. Going and improving your wardrobe, getting better basics, you know, getting more sweatshirts, getting more sweatpants, things that are like nice basics that even when you're not trying to dress up, you feel cute, you know, getting the matching PJ sets, all these things over time subconsciously will change your self-concept and make you feel more confident, but just also make you feel like, mm, like good, you know? Another thing I would recommend is practicing public speaking. I think, especially if you're trying to exude more confidence and raise your self-esteem, Part of what makes a lot of people feel not confident, you know, it's not being able to hold a conversation, speak fluidly, you know, speak in front of a crowd, all those things can make you feel like you shrivel. And I'm not gonna lie, even though I'm a content creator, I still feel myself shrivel sometimes whenever a camera comes out or whenever I'm in front of a crowd, like I still feel myself shrink a little bit. So a good way to work on this is by reading to yourself. I do this a lot, especially when I'm at home, I will read out loud. Even if I'm in the train sometimes, I will like, I won't just like comprehend the words, I will read them in my head as if I'm narrating to somebody. And I find that doing that over time has helped me with my public speaking, it's helped me learn to slow down you know I don't have to rush through what I'm saying but also it's made me more confident it's made me more you know confident in myself and being able to exude confidence when I speak because I can speak fluidly and articulate what I'm trying to say and then the last thing I will suggest in terms of how to exude more confidence raise your self-esteem is learning how to pose for photos I know that seems completely off the wall but let me tell you why when you learn how to pose for photos you're gonna take more photos and when you take more photos over time, you're gonna feel more confident because you're gonna have more and more examples of how beautiful and awesome and great you are. And when you aren't confident in front of a camera, more than likely you're not taking photos, you're not taking videos, you're not capturing your life because you're not happy with the way that you look or the way that you sound or whatever the case may be. So practicing being in front of a camera more often, even if you're not a content creator, even if you're not a content creator, I would honestly challenge you if you're trying to exude more confidence to take a selfie every single day. Whether it's a selfie with the back camera the front camera whether you're with a friend or you're by yourself i challenge you to take a picture every single day for the next 30 days and i promise you by the end of that 30 days you're gonna start to feel better you're gonna start to feel more confident one because you're looking at yourself more you're loving yourself more you're taking photos and you're being like oh i look cute here you're probably gonna share those photos more often and you're forcing yourself to get more comfortable in front of the camera which in turn is just making you more comfortable with yourself i would really recommend learning how to pose for photos and taking more photos if you're trying to change your self-concept in order to really create that idea of the person that you want to be. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a couple new tricks and tips of how you're going to improve your confidence. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.